Hello and happy Saturday and um, what a month it's been for me. I've done three major talks and lots of smaller talks and most of them about menopause. One of them was about the, the thyroid, but the thyroid is so affected by things like the um, the birth control pill, basically. And, and it's also infected by, affected by a lot of environmental factors. So things like Wi-Fi, glyphosate in the food chain, all sorts of things affect the thyroid. Poor, uh, poor gland that sits in our throat, the place from which we speak. So, so yeah, that was a fascinating uh, masterclass that I did with the Southwest Homeopathic Group. And if you're a homeopath and you're listening, um, and you're interested in that, that actually is available until the end of November. And then at some point in spring next year, I'll run my own version of that and I'll do a short workshop for um, for you. If you're not a homeopath, if you're not a health practitioner, I'm going to do a mini about looking after your thyroid because it's it's an organ which is really suffering in our day and age. So that's, I started the month with that and then went into a lot of talks for managing menopause naturally because it was menopause awareness month and oh, it is still menopause awareness month and um, I just wanted to today draw our prize so if you're watching on catch up hi Melanie um, then please um, press hashtag replay that helps to keep these little videos um, live in the feed for people to watch but you know Facebook is such a funny space because it doesn't alert everybody probably because I'm talking about natural health and not about mainstream medication um, it, it doesn't particularly favour <laughs> um, what I'm doing so you know it was kind of a bit of a surprise really when so few people actually entered a prize draw to win something free um, but hey ho you know is that algorithms is it just like too much information too much going on for people so the prize was um, a part of Hello Menopause which is by a company called Hello Wellness and I talked to Sonia last Friday um, about this so you can kind of look at the look at the feed for a discussion about her herbs really quite interesting what she puts into these blends and our winner for hello menopause is Sean so Sean I'm going to tag you below and I need your address and I happen to have a couple of other little packets um, of um, one is one is for brain um, health and one is for energy so I'm going to post those out to the other two people that uh, bothered to enter and thank you to all of you and that is Deirdre and Helen so Helen I have your address Deirdre I need yours and what I love about these particular supplements is they are 100% natural she really Sonia really takes care to to um, make sure she uses some very interesting ingredients actually and to make sure that things are the right kind of blend so that somebody can use them off the shelf because herbs are material substances and they have a push-shove effect they will make something happen in the body or they will block an action in the body so um yeah you might need just to check some contraindications and i'm just going to mention you helen just because helen is gluten sensitive so i had to read the label and i just wanted to check that i was giving you something without a venous sativa in it which is oats and i'm guessing even that tiny amount of gluten you might be sensitive to now, for the vast majority of women at menopause, and, and I've already, and other times of hormonal change, but particularly menopause, I've already mentioned the thyroid. And the thyroid really can suffer from, you know, historically we'd say gluten sensitive, you know, steer clear of bread, steer clear of um, farinaceous products, things with gluten in for the thyroid. But the later thinking, is you're not gluten sensitive you are glyphosate sensitive and glyphosate is used in the food chain um, it is a weed killer <laughs> um, so it's used on the plants to kill the weeds and it's also used before the harvest and the, and without going into that again because I can I've talked about it a lot but you know steer clear of glyphosate in your food because the main thing about it at menopause is that in your system it is cumulative that means if you start off with a small amount of it in your system or an amount of it in your system from the food that you've eaten, particularly the grains where it's used in the harvesting process, it will mimic essential amino acids. And instead of your body processing 
and metabolizing those amino acids, it starts to respond to the glyphosate as if it's that. And that is A, cumulative, and B, causes problems with protein metabolism. And if you don't metabolize your protein properly, guess what? You'll have organs which are not functioning and you'll get saggy skin, you know? So, so, so a, th a third of our protein in our body is collagen and 28% of that is glycine. So if a third of all your collagen is being mim mimicked by something that you are consuming in your food chain, you're gonna have problems. You're gonna get saggy skin, you know, who wants that? Women will spend far more money on a skincare cream than they will spend on a hormone workshop learning how to balance their hormones or something like this. You know, this costs 20 pounds um, and lasts you a month. Your skincare cream can cost you upwards of 140 pounds most of the time and it doesn't do what it says on the box whereas consuming something will i can say that till i'm blue in my face <laughs> but unfortunately you know the industry and the world into which we're born means that we are predisposed to buying the skincare cream and spending 250 pounds on our highlights on our hair and not really thinking about um about where our resources go and where we actually gather value from. So such is the law of a complementary healthcare practitioner. So if that is you and you're listening, <laughs> give me a high five because our work is long um, and you know we need strength and stamina to, to keep saying the same old stuff and try and kind of enlist um, and engage people into the concept that we are what we eat we are what we put into our bodies and if we eat glyphosate your thyroid's going to get knackered you know if we eat glyphosate then your glycine's going to disappear and you're going to be saggy so hello um but um yeah so hello menopause goes to um you can tell i got a soapbox out today hello menopause goes to sean and um a couple of like a week's worth of um of uh, brain fog clearing with think bigger and um an energy it bounce back and as i said i had to read the label for you helen but um i just wanted to talk briefly um about a prescription i made for somebody who is having her morena coil removed in a couple of weeks now the morena coil is infused with synthetic progesterone and if you read if you bother to read the bnf the british national formulary or the or mims which is a book that the nurses tend to use to look at what's in medication and what the side effects are of mainstream medication then you will find out that the number one side effect of synthetic horm of synthetic progesterone is imbalanced blood sugar so there you are at menopause your moods are all over the place your moods are swinging up and down you're gaining weight you can't understand why it's because of things like synthetic progesterone in the timeline it has other effects but its number one effect is to disorder your blood sugar natural progesterone does the complete opposite it helps balance your blood sugar it helps you defeat fat it helps you um, tone your muscle you know it's what's what's dominant in a healthy pregnancy so with that in mind the womb is a muscle that muscle gets toned when the progesterone is dominant and the womb contains the baby until the time is right to release the baby and then the oestrogen kicks in and initiates that process right at the end of pregnancy so oestrogen is an initiatory hormone for us progesterone is what keeps us going what carries us through what has tremendous vision we have receptor sites in the brain for both hormones but particularly progesterone so if you're suffering from brain fog chances are you know something like this product think bigger um, would be really helpful for you um, the newer version of this um, is called hello brain so um, so uh, yeah if you're interested in that as a product and trying that that is herbs for clearing brain fog I've got other things that I also use but what I gave to this person this woman who is coming off the morena coil she's having that removed she's stopping her estrogen I said wow oof, you know we need to bridge this so I am encouraging her to take Epsom salt baths on a regular basis and you want to be having about a kilo of Epsom salts in your bath over the course of a week so you can spread that out over the week have it all in one go 
um, a kilo of Epsom salts will will your body will absorb that naturally through the skin um, and regulate what you are taking in. So I've said to her, magnesium. Magnesium will help balance her blood sugar, which she's going to need because she's she's coming off that synthetic progesterone. Um, and I'm giving her a pot of Moonrise. So this is a natural progesterone cream. So this is derived from several herbs. I still use this. I'm 10 years post-menopause and I haven't used it today. So I'm just going to do that now. And I take just a small amount and put it on the inner crick of this elbow. Rub it in. It smells lightly of Bulgarian rose oil. It's got lots of other magical ingredients in and then I put the same amount inside my other arm every morning and I do this post menopause particularly if I am very busy I'm motivated and I'm not doing enough self-care so so I do it most days but I particularly do it and remember to think that I um, have done is given her some homeopathic remedies so she's got um, a supplement to help balance things um, she's got a natural progesterone cream she is using the Epsom salt baths and what was interesting when I ran my program for her is that it said she needed a remedy relating to the pituitary gland now the pituitary gland will have disordered its conversation that it should be having its natural conversation um, while she's on the morena coil and while she's on the estrogen because we're putting in some hormones there and the, and the pituitary gland will have to relate to those synthetic hormones so yes they might have been deficient and she's not been utilizing natural resources for um to balance those hormones which she could have easily done all along um, so the pituitary gland is going to to um, to need a bit of support. So pituitary gland. The other thing that came up, which was very interesting, is I know that historically she had a massive ovarian cyst when she was very young, and she had one ovary removed. And she's actually had four children from one ovary, and that's pretty amazing. But that asymmetry in the body relates to one of what we call a our family history remedies a nose ode um, and so I've also given her a nose ode which relates to that type of asymmetry in the body so that lack of symmetry we've got two ovaries two adrenal glands two kidneys two lungs <laughs> two ears <laughs> we've got twos of various organs and they really should be in balance and talking to each other but if they're out of balance and there's a sense of asymmetry in the system then we're looking to a particular family inheritance. And so that, that came up on the program that I use, which is a bioresonance program. And um, yeah, so, so that's what's in the mix for her to come off synthetic hormones and to try to create balance. Her main goal is to grow her hair back. Now, post-menopause, that is not the easiest thing but we're going to have a go so i've also given her a homeopathic remedy for nutrition to help her draw up nutrition more efficiently and a homeopathic remedy relating to hair loss and i'm going to encourage her to eat foods that are rich in silica and rich in biotin um, i have seen women post menopause grow their hair back on a good diet and through taking blue green algae so um, there's many things that we can utilize and we can get specific what grew my hair back um, during menopause when I'd lost a lot due to um, thyroid dysregulation was a product called MAP which is amino acids so what I needed to do was balance my amino acids what someone else might need to do is increase silica and biotin etc in their diet um, so we're all, we're all a little bit different. I don't metabolize a particular protein called methionine well, and um, that is genetic. It's there in my DNA. And so I, I kind of tweak that every so often. So that's enough of me chatting. I will get a couple of addresses to send out our prizes. And I've got a question from you, Melanie. Would I recommend natural menopause for someone who has had progesterone and estrogen dominant breast cancer previously 
my answer is possibly because that is an extremely complex case and I would want for that person to be monitored um, and and just while I'm talking about monitoring it is fundamental if you are on um, on progesterone or estrogen synthetic progesterone or estrogen and you're going through menopause when your body is naturally changing as well that you are monitored that you have a check-in you know on another note I was just talking to a friend earlier whose son is I think he's 19 or 20 he's still growing as a boy he's still growing and he has a complex um, inherited condition or acquired condition I'm not sure um, he's not my client but um, I just said he is still growing he will need to be monitored he will need to have his medication adjusted so if you're listening and you're on HRT or you're coming off HRT or you're considering going on it you must be monitored you must get that and we are particularly crap in the UK about monitoring hormones you know so so know your stuff know that if you've got the coil in you know it's recommended that it's removed every six years you know maybe get a check halfway through that you haven't got some other pathology or something going on you know it's, um, yeah complex cases need monitoring need someone to take the case need someone with experience to understand the process and what I would say if you're introducing something with a complex case is you want to do it slowly you know is introduce something slowly don't go gung-ho and take the you know the largest amount first you know introduce assess introduce assess you know and and um, yeah you know there's so many sources so for a hundred percent natural um, you just saw that here hundred percent natural ingredients um, these uh, hello wellness products are great and um, the box as well is biodegradable so the idea is is that you buy one you take it for a month and then you refill with a pouch and we we save the planet too which is rather cute so have a great Saturday I am gonna chill out because it's been a busy month <laughs> Thanks for listening and um, like I said, press hashtag replay. Lots of things coming up. I have um, some really great urban retreats for menopause coming up with um, the yoga space in uh, down in Woolwich. Um, very easy to get to on the Elizabeth line um, for those of you who are in London. And um, we have the online um, embodiment course which starts uh, November 7th. That is weekly. Um, and that is all about uh, fitness, health um, aspects with me, and then uh, shamanic wisdom with my friend um, Chintzia. And um, yep, so there's that going on. And later in the year, in December, I'm actually going to do a grief circle um, with a friend. We're doing, um, Tracy Law Lawson May, um, we are doing a grief circle together and... Um, She's going to do some drumming and we're going to do some healing work. Um, we're going to do a bit of talking and writing. And yeah, we're just going to create a good space to share, you know, collected and personal uh, grief and just kind of shift through um, some of the ways in which that can hold us. So lots of love. Have a great um, afternoon and um, a great weekend. And I'll see you soon.